Restoration. Restoration is brought to you by Hisense. Everyday prices for everyday people. Yeah, it's extra long sanitary pad for extra comfort. We got gas protection. Afro chick, I'm going for Crojian Chinino. see this smile it means we're about to have some good time so before we get our good time started let's take a word from our sponsors we are a people of choice and preference our choices determines the quality of our lives our preferences depends on vast reasons high sense has all the reasons high sense and better fridge is very elegant Efficient cooling system that keep your food fresher. Hisense means quality. Long lasting quality. Hisense AC is energy efficient. It's super chill and it does not make noise. Watch all your seasonal football matches on Hisense TV. Only Hisense gives you five years warranty. Hisense, everyday prices for everyday people. Hisense, life reimagined. Chikirin and Mahon Fesunko Crab. A fade year natural hair phones when your hair extension. And how more to Afro Chikirin be new border fem boko. A natural as a sexual or be good difference. Afro Chik, HBS Nick of a bye. Open your work, come lemly, you have enjoy FM. Pray 0202 747464. Afro Chick, I'm going to be Thank you to Jim Ray Company Limited, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, GTP, Ophelia of ABS Collection for my beautiful outfit. And today my top is by Stacey's Boutique GH. Thank you to Divine Cassie for my makeup, to Adam of GH Beauty Artistry. Thank you for my touch-ups and the makeup of our guest. To Stacey's Boutique GH again, thank you very much for my beautiful jelly shoes. And if you want to have braids that are breathtaking, please take your phone Save this number 0202-747464 and you can have your own Afro chic luxury braids. That is our new brand in town. So you've done the Afro chic for a long time, which was our natural hair extension. We're giving you the opportunity to braid your hair in style. Five years ago, a young lady came on our stage and wowed us with a story that God most people talking. She was criticized for some of the decisions she made in the past, but to her, it did not mean a thing because that was her past and what was important to her was her future and where she was going. Let's take a little peek at that interview. Every morning I wake up to a message from my guest on Facebook and I kept wondering, what is the zeal that drives her to do this every morning? What is the story that gives this passion so much energy? And today, she's here to share that story. Please, let's welcome Elom, the Zionist. Is that you? Yes. I, w I wanted to know what would wake someone up and get you typing on Facebook when people will be posting pictures of what they are eating or where they slept last night. Yeah. yeah. But you make a conscious effort to yes. let us know that the kingdom of God is at hand yeah. and God does not really look at who you are, yeah. but will just do what he has to do for yes, you. Of course. She said, I've done everything. The only thing I've not done is murder. What, what did you do? You said everything. 
It can alcohol. Yep. Drugs. Yep. I grew up actually. I was born in Nigeria, so I came back to Ghana with my family. And uh, I grew up in a humble family, a very godly family, a Christian background for that matter. My parents were rich, but my mom, I was eight years old when my mom passed out. Life was terrible. And when you got to Accra, how different was the life? And when we got to Accra, it was different because we were living a flashy life. We were living a uh, very yeah, comfortable life before my mom died. So when we got back to Accra, when actually we, we came to where we were in a one room apartment, I was shocked because of what I went through in Ho earlier on. Mm -hmm. You know, I became a bit strong in surviving. So when I came back to Accra and I saw that, that situation, I just adjusted myself adjusted. To, the, yeah, to it and I was that. But I told myself that this is not where I want to be. I always tell myself, and I even sometimes get angry and tell my dad that I'm not going to live here for the rest of my life. One day, one day, I know I'm going to move out of this place. You said you got so depressed at a point in your life. Yes, please. That you had to resort to marry an elderly person. How old was your husband? My husband now is 90 years old. <laughs> So how old were you when you got married? I got married to him when I was 24 years. Were you happy? When I did the marriage, after court, I remember that night I cried, secretly. I went behind our house and I cried. I cried because all these things that were happening, I had no, ma no mother, no mom. I had no mentor. I had nobody to talk to. So I realized that I needed somebody mm -hmm. who could yeah. advise me who could love me. So I cried that day and I was like, oh my, I did that marriage without the knowledge of my family, actually. Mm -hmm. My dad never knew about it, nobody knew about it. So I paid people around, about four, three people. Contracts? Yes, I just paid people, oh, follow me, sign as my uncle, do this, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. Oh, these are things you hear and see in movies, right? Yes. Yeah. That was how I even met my husband. Were, were, were you planning to defraud him? They had already defrauded my husband before they brought me into the picture. Oh. They had already finished him. <laughs> so wh how, I mean, wh when what was the role? My role, then I didn't know, I was working for them, mm -hmm. but not knowing they were defrauding my husband with my picture. So oh. they do all that, I don't know how they did it. So later on I came in as, in the marriage. Mm -hmm. When my, my, my friend told me that, oh, there is this man that is interested in me, because of the depression I was going through, I just decided to use that opportunity to leave the country. So I jumped into it and grabbed, and it. grabbed that opportunity, yeah. What point did you say, I've had enough, I want to become a better person? <laughs> when I came back to Ghana, when it hit me hard, I spoke to myself that day that I was arrested. I said, this is it. Ghana, here I come. Restoration. After five years, she's back here on our set, looking more beautiful, looking refreshed, looking rejuvenated. Please, let's welcome our guest today, Elam, the Zionist. <laughs> years already the last time you were here you were much more skinnier yeah. like myself i was also skinny then yeah that means you've been eating a lot of food food not really it's it's because then i i i was a bit more into my ministry and i fast a lot and okay a lot. yeah so uh, but being in the uk now i don't do much you don't do as, much so the last time you were here yes we were at a point where you were working towards going to join your husband in the UK. Mm, How? I, uh, wait. <laughs> I, I know it all. <laughs> yeah, because you had come back home and you're working towards going back to reunite with your husband. How did that happen? Actually, 
when I came on your show, after my transformation, um, I think 2015, the Holy Spirit was leading me to try because I, ha I had been deported or removed for seven and a half years mm -hmm. before then. So I was like, some, something pushed me. I know it was the Holy Spirit to try and apply for okay. a, certain, yeah, a settlement visa. I did it without the knowledge of my late husband. So I did everything. I, I, I remember I quite lost a lot of money because it was refused. And I did another application. It was refused. Whoa. And I took a lawyer and we did an appeal. It was then that I informed my late husband that this is what I was trying to do. So he should fight for me over there. So he did his best. So after your show, um, my ministry started booming and I was focused on my ministry. I didn't even have, have any idea I would even see him before he passed on. So I was just there on the 1st of March. I, I, uh, I had a call from Apostle Abochi of the Lord's Pentecostal Church who called me concerning an interview I did on GH1 then. So I went to see him in his church. He interviewed me and asked me questions. And after that, he prayed for me on his altar. So on that day, my team and I, we were on our way, marveled, talking about the prayer he said on me. And we're like, this prayer is so powerful. So if somebody, if someone is working me, that person would have died by now, or maybe there's going to be a breakthrough. So on our way, as we were talking about that prayer, I received a text message on my phone on the 1st of March, 2017. After 2015, 15. when I had, yes, and forgotten refused. about everything and was focused on Transform to Shine and the Zionist movement, I just received a message on the 1st of March, 2017, saying they've overturned their decision. To just like me. that? Yes. So I, I was just shaking. We couldn't believe it. So I called my lawyer, um, JFK Agudeche, and he said, hello, your God has spoken. This is it. And that was it. That was how I ended up. First of March, I left Ghana on the 17th of April, back to England after seven and a half years, back to my late husband. So how, how did you break the news to him? <laughs> When I go back, actually, after I, after I got the visa and I brought the news here and he was so excited, he couldn't believe it. And he didn't know I was transformed, actually. So he was expecting the bad girl that he had sent Married. back home. <laughs> yes. To, yeah, he was expecting maybe worse then. So when I go home, the first thing God told me, actually, when I was going was to lead him to Christ. That was my assignment back to the UK. So immediately I got home, I knelt down. He opened the door, then I knelt down in front of him to ask for forgiveness. And he was also asking me for forgiveness because he thought he has done something. So he was also saying I should forgive him also for sending me back home. Then I sat him down, spoke to him about Christ and led him that day. The day I landed at wow. home, I led him to Christ and he accepted Jesus Christ as his his Lord and personal, personal savior. savior. Was he not confused? He was quite confused. Then I told him he should calm down. There's something more he's going to see about me. So as the day went by, he was seeing the change, the way I treated him, the way I speak now changed. And I was always talking about, to him about Christ. We were always reading the Bible. I started teaching him from... Genesis <laughs> to wow. everybody. Yeah. I taught him. He started reading the Bible. And, you know, that was how everything. And how I take him out without feeling ashamed. We go to the restaurant together. We go to town together to shop. People will look at us. They will laugh at us. But I don't have any shame anymore because I have Christ in me. So I, I, I was so actually, I, I think God brought me back for a transformation to go back and take care of him, to have a peaceful ending. That was what happened. So when I went back, all I was focused was on to 
to make sure he 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 he, he experienced the, the end best. of it, like the best to be happy before he he passed on i didn't know when he would die though then he was i went back he was 90 years so i didn't know when so all i was doing was to make him happy and i think he was living with the thought and the prayer that he will see me once more one, again so that was what kept him alive. So when I went by, it took one and a half years. He passed on on the 4th of July, 2018, when I went viral with my marriage. During that period, July, June, July. Because both of you were out doing evangelism. Yes, together. You were I was doing taking everything. Picture together with him. He now understood me. He was amazed. Every day when he wakes up, he said, my beautiful wife. Wow. I can't believe this. I can't, like... He was shocked because the, the wild girl, the crazy girl that he got married to in 2005, I was a wild girl. You know, my, I, I was into yeah. drugs, into men. Whilst I was married to him, I was doing a whole lot. My lifestyle was nothing to write home about. So me coming back now, a changed person, and always talking about Jesus, always making him feel happy. I now wheel him out without feeling ashamed. At first, I will never even go out with him. I can leave him and go to London to meet other men and do all sort of stuff and come back, insult him anyhow. Even I, it got to a point that I begged him to just adopt me as his daughter. <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> I, I told know the marriage. Yes, I said he should just <laughs> adopt me, that was how far it went. I did so many crazy things then. So when I came back, I saw it as also a restitution moment. So I, I, I asked the Holy Spirit to give me the strength to love and cherish him and to make sure that he, he died a peaceful and fulfilling death. And I always prophesy on him every day. I, told, I always tell him that you're not going to die on the hospital bed you would die at home peacefully. And to my amazement, um, that was exactly what happened. It, it, I woke up one morning and he was gone peacefully. When you got to London, yes. after being away for so long, so long, were things not different? People who knew your past, yes, would they look at you or did they look at you and say oh give us a break yes it's just a nine day wonder yeah yeah actually when i got back to portsmouth people who knew me couldn't when i start like when they meet me and uh, one when they meet me they feel like they've seen a ghost everybody was like what this crazy girl is back <laughs> yeah everybody was like what this crazy back is girl is back to this old man now he she's coming to kill the old man then I'll be quiet and start laughing. Then I said, no, I'm now a better person. Then I'll start preaching to you. I sit them down and start preaching them and telling them how God, I encountered Jesus and how I became a better person. Mm -hmm. So with my lifestyle and all that I was doing and they seen how caring I was, I became a carer as well as a wife to my late husband. Oh. Yes, I was taking care of him single-handedly without no machines, nothing. So they saw how... I cared single-handedly for him. So they, 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 they knew this, the, the transformation was glare. So they, 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 they just said, no, this is the work of God indeed. Because they knew my past, how crazy I was. The whole of Portsmouth, people were, you know, the clubs, everyone knows me. How my husband used to chase me with the rice. Like a whole lot of crazy. My police station arrests and detains in wow. to and fro those times, <laughs> all those things. So they, they just, in fact, they were mad till, till today, to, till today, a lot of people, when they see me, they just said, I thank God for your life. They are, and they are challenged, actually. A lot of people are challenged to, to just be with Christ because of my life. And because of that, I took a, a part-time job as a carer to learn how to take yes. care. Yes. So I took a part-time job as a carer just to, to learn and to be patient because I wasn't the type that was patient with him and all those things. And I know coming back, I was scared. Even on my way in the flight, I was thinking, um, I, I, would I be able to do this? 
I was thinking, I thought a lot and I was praying. I said, God, give me the grace. Sometimes I have to be calling ambulance because when something is happening to him at night, I call the ambulance. It takes them five hours, sometimes four hours before they arrive. So I just have to put all my hope, my trust, my belief in God and do what I can do for him not to die. I remember when I arrived the first week, God showed me something. He was so excited and overwhelmed that he just broke. One day he was, we just sat down and he just... Went off. Be, went off and became weak. So for one week, he couldn't walk. He was in bed. I had to feed him. I had to bath him in bed. I had to do everything that one week. So I realized that it was a test for me. Then I started praying, crying. I cried, actually. I cried day and night. And I said, how can I come only one week and you die? People, a lot of people would think, we'll talk. yes. So that was what I was telling God. God, this is not going to happen. God, you didn't bring me back for this to happen at this time. So I kept prophesying on him, praying for him every day, believing. Then anytime I pray and prophesy, then he re God revives him. They become strong. Then, you know, I don't use the wheelchair again. We now walk to town together. We walk, yes. And I'm, I'm like, wow. So he was, it was on and off, on and off. My battles with him was, I was a personal carer, taking care of him at home. My, our doctor was, she was, our doctor was so amazed how I could do, because she kept asking me questions. You are a young lady. How do you do this? How, in fact, she kept asking me so many questions. But God gave me the grace to take care of him. And I'm fulfilled. I'm really, really fulfilled. Doing something is one thing, and if that something does not bring you fulfillment, then it's not even worth doing at all. We'll be right back after this break. I remember the days I just couldn't go to the gym because it was that time of the month. Yes, extra long sunny trip took the worry away. Easy. The new Yaz Extra Long Sanitary Pad is the joy of every woman. It is extra absorbent and fits perfect. But don't allow anything to hold you back when it's that time. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Feel confident, stay fresh. Hi. Is this supposed to be that time of the month? Yes. Yes, confidence, I got. Yes. We got Yaz protection. I got. Yaz Extra Long Sanitary Pad for extra comfort. We got Yaz Protection. Erin FC. Erin A. Kono. A foot chicken. Erin Mito Kama. A foot chicken. Erin Emma Hofesson Kokra. A fade year natural hair phones when your hair extension. And how old to Afro chicken really be new border fem boko? A natural as a sexual or be good difference. Afro chick, HBS neck of a buy. Open your work, come lemly, yeah, Ben Joy FM. Pray 0202 I love to eat a tasty breakfast in the morning Something delicious and healthy Filled with vitamins That's my day right, makes me so bright Keeps my body happy Let me tell you about what I eat It's my secret Hooch, crunch, crunch, of this Crunch and crunch complex. Hooch, crunch and crunch complex. Hooch, crunch and crunch complex. Wow! I say hooch, crunch and crunch complex. Hooch, crunch and crunch complex. Crunch it! Yeah! So much matter we are. I just so much to me swap to we. Who makes it down swap? We are assassin. Assassin's to be. We are not what that for more. Monsoon you. Our Jim Ray Company Limited. Mamma, my dear, tell me where we will soon be with you. And a copy of March, a real year. 
the maker they say the brand new asase oh we are you should that if you gym ray company limited we are your brand new color tv 32 inch what are you near the amount when you are selling energy promo and this is a woman is a as i said one and cassava you have to 30 percent what did you marry now they are saying jim ray is asking everywhere to carry Kofolia, Afiena, West Palm City, Kaswa, East Palm City, Kaswa, and Shah Hills. Numbers near 0509 461675 and 0265 149942. And your Company Limited, Tonnegy Promo. We are a people of choice and preference. Our choices determine the quality of our lives. Our preferences depend on vast reasons. Hisense has all the reasons. Hisense and Veta Fridge is very elegant. Efficient cooling system that keeps your food fresher. Hisense means quality, long lasting quality. Hisense AC is energy efficient, it's super chill, and it does not make noise. Watch all your seasonal football matches on Hisense TV. Only Hisense gives you five years warranty. Hisense everyday prices for everyday people. Hisense, life reimagined. Wondering where to get quality yet affordable kits and baby essentials? Look no further. This is the one-stop shop for you. At Hertz's Mother Care, we stock a variety of kits and baby clothing, shoes, car seats and carriers, baby wardrobes, baby feeding essentials, and everything that you can think of when it comes to babies and kids. Why don't you call us on 0246 553165. We are located on the Ahunjo Main Street, opposite the Fire City. Hetty's Mother Care, your mommy's favorite store. Won't you say you love Okay, it's another week and we're still at the Mala Market. We're still interacting with women who are so in love with restoration. And we have another woman here. She's a mom. And I just love the way she's packed her stuff right here. Like, you can tell she's very collected. My, it's the same. And Pacho, you're frozen. My Joyce. My Joyce. Mom, wait there, you buy a young man a bunny. Yeah, this is our restoration part. Now, me person me who did the kind of now pay was showing the whole case. Now, me need you to say, send us off on case. Say, us off for the. Do you need bedu? Oh, bedu could be, bedu could be. Hey, send us to a man for say. Yeah, the man they say, yeah, do. Yeah, do yeah, do. And I be my yeah, we say we soon. Wow. <laughs> Restoration. Welcome back, and that was our winner for this week. And again, in the studio today, some of you will go home with something from Hisense. And of course, our guest would also get to pick something 
And let's see what Elam gets to pick. Before that fulfillment, I know when you're living with someone that age, you have concerns. But at times you would sleep and think, what if I wake up and he's gone? We had different rooms. So put, I put him to bed, pray with him, do the do's with him as husband and wife. He was still ready to do it. Oh, oh yes. My late husband was a strong man. When it comes to that, he will, he will do it. So, so he was doing the do. He was still <laughs> at 90. <laughs> <laughs> he was still ready to do it. So after doing everything with him, I put him to bed, kiss him, and go to my room. So in the night, I have to be like, I have to uh, eat. I have to be alert or be ready and what he does is, if he's in pain, he will hit the wall. So in the night, I'm always alert and awake to see if he's in pain or shouting or something is happening to him. So I'll just, my concerns were there. I was always worried if he was going to leave me, but the Christ aspect in me gave me encouragement. And I always prophesize uh, Psalm 118 verse 17 on him, that you will not die, but you live to declare the good works of the Lord. And whenever he tells me that, oh, I, can be, I, I don't want to leave you, he, he was always concerned about me. Oh, you. So he made sure that he showed me everything. Actually, my late husband gave me his funeral plans mm -hmm. in 2004, before we even got married in 2005. Five. <laughs> that was how much he liked. I don't know what, he just gave it to me, so I kept it. And in 2011, whilst in Ghana, he sent me his will. Oh. In 2011, I kept that one too. So when I went back, I had all those things in place because he had given the will to uh, one of his sisters to keep as well. So if I, had, I were to be in Ghana and anything happens, the sister would have called me to tell me that he's passed what? on. But how would I be able to go? Because knowing that I was removed back to Ghana, I wouldn't be able to go back mm -hmm. to you. I don't know how I'm going to do it anyway. So God, God's plan, yes, everything was orchestrated by God. God knew why he brought me back to Ghana. God knew. So at first I was bitter about my removal. Wow. So bitter with the home office. When I watch anything British or English, I hate it. I will switch the channel because I was angry with them. But when I accepted Jesus Christ and I, I came to the realization that it was my lifestyle that brought this to me. So after I repented, I forgave myself as well. The night before his passing, was yes. he sick? What happened was I had bought a new scooter because I was, I was always wheeling him in a wheelchair. So I was getting tired with the wheelchair and I said, okay, let him use a scooter. So I bought a new scooter and, you know, in our house, our house, we had a ramp. So he said that morning he had an appointment at the hospital. So I took him with the wheelchair to the hospital for the appointment. And we came back home and I said, okay, sweetheart, I'm going to commercial town to do something quickly. I'll be back. So please just be home. I'll be back. I left him. I was in town one hour later. I had a call that my husband fell down in town and was rushed to the in main town. hospital. Yes. I was like, oh God, I left him in my home. Why did he go out? He normally walks with the, um, this thing. The he doesn't thing. like, my late husband was like, he wants to be active. He, he feels like he's strong. So he was always challenged. Yes, with, with a young wife. He Thank you. So he's always like, he wants to do things by himself. And actually he cooks and does everything for me. He washes my clothes. He irons it. He does everything to keep himself strong. He went out and he fell down and I had a call. And I, when I spoke to him, they asked me to talk to him. I, I spoke to him and he said, go home, drink something, enjoy, have fun. I'm fine. When I, I'll call you to come to the hospital when, I, when everything is done. Don't worry, don't worry. Just go and enjoy. That was what he said. Go and enjoy yourself. Eat, drink. And I'm like, hmm. What is this man this saying? Is not so yeah, so I was in the room, I was in the house, and I was praying, praying, praying. And three hours later, I had a call. He said he was, everything was done, but he was admitted. So I went to the hospital to see him. So we were discharged that day around <coughs> 11 p.m. So we got home. So when we got home, he turned around. I was in the kitchen doing something, and he turned around. He said something to me. Then I said, Shut up. Excuse my language. 
You don't have to say this. I always tell you that you have Christ in you. You're not going to die now. You live long. You're not going to die now. Please. Then he said, ah, whenever he's talking to me, I just brush things off. I said, no, honey, I have Christ. We have Christ. This house now, we, have, we are living with Christ as the center and pillar of this home now. So don't just prophesy good things. Actually, I taught him how to cast away things. Like when he ha he's having me, then he'll be like, in the name of Jesus, I am healed. In the name of Jesus. Anytime my head, in the name of Jesus. In the name, you know, he started, <laughs> I taught him so much that he, he believed so much in Christ. So I never knew, I, I never saw his death coming. Seriously, I know he would die. But during the period that I went viral with my marriage and the whole world was, was talking and insulting me, I had calls from all over the world. People were calling him. His friends and family everywhere and abroad was calling him that he's all over the internet, internet and everything. June, July, this, that same period, 2018, June, July, I woke up in the morning. And that evening I had spoken to him because I was having some attacks. And I was like, Pray with any time you're praying, pray for me because as a servant of God, if anyone wants to attack me and they can't get me, they're going to get someone closer Close to me. To and this is how it works in the ministry. So please. And he said, yes, I know I've been praying for you every day. Don't worry. My beautiful wife. Oh, you know you are going to live long. Don't worry. So after preaching to him, I kissed him. I sat there. We had chit chat. You know, we do all those things. And actually my late husband wakes up at five takes his breakfast, he takes his medication, you know, he never smoked in his life, he never drank in his life. So he was always making sure that he's doing things on, uh, on, at the right time. So six o'clock, I didn't hear any noise in the house because normally he, after doing all that, he knocked my door and says, sweetheart, I'm going out. He go to the uh, bus stop, enter the bus and pick the newspaper. That's the exercise he does every in yeah, the uh, yeah. So he walk out and go and pick the newspaper and walk back home. I didn't hear anything 8 a.m. in the morning. I didn't hear any noise in the house. So I woke up at 9 o'clock, went to his room, and he, he turned as if he wanted to come out of bed. Yeah, he was lying like this with the eyes open. So I saw the, the, the heart beat a bit, and he was like... So I, I checked, and I realized that he was breathing a bit. So I said, okay, maybe he didn't sleep at night. So I should leave him to rest. So I just emptied the catheter. So when I emptied the catheter, I touched his, his legs and he was like, he moved a bit. And I said, I don't want to wake him up. So I just emptied the catheter and went to throw it in the bath and in the toilet and went back into my room quietly. 9.30, I didn't hear any movement in the house. So I woke up, I ah, nothing. So I woke up and went into the room again. He was in the same position, but this time I didn't, I don't know, something just, when what I went into it? the room, something like, I was like, so I touched the legs like this. So when I touched the legs, I felt some shock. I just jumped. Jesus, I'm finished. The first thing that came into my mind was the viral issue was still going on. And people were insulting me, sending messages, and people were bashing me all over. So the first thing was, Jesus, my time for anyame. <laughs> And all that came into my mind was, oh, Omeka Semekunu. And in fact, that morning was, <laughs> I think it will be a day I will never forget. It keeps on reoccurring. Anytime, like the memories is. So I jumped and called a friend. They didn't pick up. I called the second one. They, nobody picked up. And one of my friends, I shouted, he called, Nathaniel was a a young pastor in Portsmouth that had just been introduced to me by a goddaughter I got just opposite, a Ghanaian guy, girl lady who saw restoration and was following me and realized that I had come to Portsmouth and contacted me. When lo and behold, that young lady, Elizabeth Danso, was just across the street. So that young lady was my savior. I think God just brought her. Thank you. So she, she rushed that morning and came to my rescue. So I couldn't talk to the paramedic on phone because they were asking me to bring him from the bed on down and resuscitate him. And I said, like, my husband is thick tall. How can I? Like, I was afraid and like everything was just going on. And I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. They said, do you have anyone? I said, I have nobody. I live with him alone. Then they said, go out. 
knock the neighbors, you just knock the doors. I went out, I was jumping, knocking the neighbor. nobody came out. I was shouting, knocking everybody's door. In England, England, nobody will mind you when you are, like, you are shouting. You have to call the police or the, the, I was knocking, they'll think maybe you are coming to attack them. Nobody came out. So immediately the lift opened and the girl just came in and said, Auntie Elon, Auntie Elon, what's happening? I said, Elizabeth, I'm finished. Elizabeth, I'm finished. Then she came inside. So she was the one who came and the next door neighbor, a white old man who never spoke to me when I returned back. I don't know. He just hated me. So anytime I greet him, he doesn't respond. respond. So I also stopped greeting him. But he was the one who came out, the only one who came out that and that came day. and was doing the research stating. Lo and behold, something just spoke to my daughter, my goddaughter, Elizabeth Danso, to video him. By then, I was speaking in tongues from kitchen to toilet everywhere. I was just going around speaking in tongues for a miracle. So Elizabeth Danso was the one who videoed. The paramedics came one hour later, they confirmed him dead. And I said, Jesus, I'm finished. I was just on the floor like this, sitting down. That was how, what I was, I was just like this. I'm mad, I was just like this. I'm, I'm finished. So all I was thinking was, they're gonna think I killed him. So. Thank, lo and behold, after the paramedics left, the police people came and they did an investigation. They asked questions and they said, okay, they're going to take the case further. So the, I should give them one week. So I was waiting. And that I think I called the family, the sister. So the sister came with the daughter. And so they were around. And the stepson from another woman before me came in with a girlfriend. And what he was doing was, he was telling the police people that they should ask me a question. I'm the one who killed him. Because of the fall, he had um, some marks when he had a fall a day before. He had some mark on his body. So they were thinking I had done something to him. So as he was lying there, they were asking me questions. Then immediately my sister-in-law was like, shut up. She, he lives here with the wife. He told the police that if you want to ask any question, ask the wife to answer any question. Don't take anyone outside to be asking any questions. No, 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 no. And shut up, you are not the stepson. You are just like my sister-in-law fought for me savior. that, thank you, was my savior that morning. So the, the body was conveyed around 11 a.m. in the morning. And I was there alone with my daughter, Elizabeth Danso. That young girl, a 21-year-old girl to see and go through that morning and she was there. Auntie Elom, Auntie Elom, don't worry. This, like, he was the one comforting me. And the family had left. I was all alone in the house. So she slept with me the first night, and I was left alone. A couple of friends of mine, um, Douglas and Leticia, God bless them so much. They were also taking turns, but they couldn't do it all. So I, I was left, at the point, I was left alone to do everything. Like, I was home going around, I registered the death on my own. Actually, the funeral, I just did everything, called the families. This is the date for the funeral, everything. And the daughter, her, she came a day before the uh, funeral and she said, I don't want anything. If you want to give something to someone, give it to only the stepson. Like you can give something to the stepson. And I said, all right. So I packed all his clothes with hair that day we packed everything and we took it to the British Heart Foundation, the charity shop. We, we gave it out. After the burial, the, on the 4th of July, 2018, we did everything. <coughs> and the burial grounds, that was the first time I saw the son who hated me for the marriage. I've never seen him. He never wanted to see me because he didn't want he didn't, yeah, the him. idea of um, me getting married to the dad, he, he attended it. So I never saw him. But he came for the dad's burial on, the, on that day. I buried my, my husband on the 2nd of August, 2018. And after the burial, 30 minutes after I got home with some few friends, 
I had a call from my um, stepdaughter. The funeral was a farce. The funeral was a sh like, shouting on me, a whole lot. And what she said was, where is the wheel? Where her? I was shocked, actually, because I never knew white people also fight. <laughs> <laughs> because a day, he, she came to the house, and she told me that she didn't want, she didn't want anything. anything. Because actually, he, she doesn't, nobody visits my husband. The seven and a half years, he only spoke to his families on phone. He's that type that he was so reserved. Always at home or go out, say hi to people in town and come to his room. Since I met my late husband, we had no fr fr uh, friends coming to the house. I, my friends visit, but he visited. had no, yeah. He always talked to people on phone. He was that reserved and he loves his space and privacy so much. And his family members, none of them comes to visit. So when she came and she was like, if you want to give something to someone, give it to the step. Mm -hmm. Son, no, like I said, okay, fine. I was, I thought she was cool with me, mm -hmm. and actually, she was. She loved me. I, I thought. Yes. Hey, thirty minutes after, share. She sent the step, um, the yes. children. Mm -hmm. So my late husband's grandchildren were now fighting me, calling, threatening. If you don't leave the house, and <laughs> two days after my my late husband got there. Uh, death, something happened. Um, I was asked to leave our home, but I stood firm. I finished the burial and everything. <sighs> it wasn't easy. So this is not just a cultural thing that happens here. I because thought, yeah. all that you're saying is something that happens here. When, when you lose a husband, yes. families will come in and... And that's, yes. I, I never thought it's... I, did, I, I saw it for myself. They started threatening me, calling me on phone and all that. But one thing I did was I never called the police to tell the police that this is no, because I knew I had the will. And the will can prove, like, fight for me, mm -hmm. even if we go to court. So when they talk, all I will do is, if my friends are around, especially the young pastor, Nathaniel Bedu, he will take the phone and speak to them as my brother. Because he was saying that they feel like I have no family in England, so they can yeah. intimidate me. And also, because I'm a black person, they talk. They could uh, push you. Yes, I'm around. So <clears throat> the guy would take the phone and talk as if I'm like he was. He really, that guy really fought for me, and God bless him and Elizabeth. And so God bless them so much. I cherish them so much. I don't play with them. So why, why did it take you a year to break the news? The news? It took me one year to break the news because. <laughs> I went viral with the marriage in 2018, June, July, and it was going on. And he passed on with the same period that people were bashing me for marrying. And the, the, when you Google me now, you will see Ashlam the Zionist, all my stories there. If you Google Ghanaian lady marries 90 years, that was what the Nigerian blogger started the thing with, and it went viral. So everybody was, they thought I had just gotten married, married. to a 90 year. They didn't know that there was a story behind it. Actually, that year was our 13th anniversary. Yes. So they didn't know that we've been there for ages. So because of all the things that was going on, and uh, you know, the, um, internet troll is mm -hmm. so massive that I myself, I was not in a good frame of mind, mind. before he's dead. So I was into shock, and I was like, we, I had a plan with um, Nathaniel and... Elizabeth and my two couple friends, Leticia and Douglas, that we have to keep it a secret because, and they say, yes, we have to, because if I break the news to the world, you will say, dead. I'm dead, they'll finish me. So I never told my dad, I never told my sister, I never told Apostle, my spiritual father, nobody in Ghana knew. I buried him single handed. I think handed. except me. Yeah. yeah. And I buried him, did all the funeral and everything because I had book. A ticket a night before he passed on. I did everything, came to Ghana for two weeks to relax and, and get over it. That was then I told my dad, my sister, and Apostle, and they were like, Apostle saw it actually, and told my dad and my sister that something is going to happen, like my husband, something is going. So they were like, mm. they didn't hear from me for a month and they were, they were worried. They were worried. So I didn't tell them, and I finished the burial everything before 
I came to Ghana and told them. So I kept it for a year, actually. I intentionally, I kept it for a year because of the reason. And uh, I know people will insult me. So, but the one year after, because I was bedding, I go to the cemetery like hell. Every day I can, if I'm not working, I go to the cemetery talking to him. Because I was expecting him to say something. The last words of him on his dying bed or something. But I never got to listen to anything of such. So I keep asking questions. I keep asking questions. So I'll go to the cemetery, talk to him, come back home. And actually, that period, when I went back, I had two and a half years visa, which after two and a half years, I was supposed to get another two and a half years before I'll get my indefinite stay. So when he passed on, I'm like, I'm going back to Ghana. What's going to happen to me? I'm finished. Everything is finished. That was my, my thought. I was at, like, so many things were just ringing bell. So after I came to Ghana and went back, I took a lawyer by the grace of God and put in my application for my indefinite. It took me six months. I think I got it last year, July. By the grace of God, I got my indefinite stay within two years. Wow. Which was supposed to be five years. To the glory of God, God restored me. It was five years now. God restored me within two years. Everything that I had lost in the past, I got everything Good back man. within two years. So that was my consolation. At that point, I became like, oh God, at least I'm fulfilled. And two, I was fulfilled though, but I was afraid because I didn't know if I'm coming back to Ghana or I'll be in England. So it's like I'm hanging and I was just praying, 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 praying till the day I got the news, the, the card of my indefinite. I, I, I was rolling in my room. I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes, I was a God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't These know are what... the things God can do, yes, right? Yes, I was like, God. <laughs> oh. I was so happy and I was, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I was so you happy. You see that feeling? That is the same look I want to find out if I will get here in the studio. <laughs> yeah, it's the same look I want to find out. So, if you are ready for a high sense, super crazy giveaway moment, uh, let's see who won. Oh, my best friend won. Okay. Okay. Come on, let me help you up. Good. So congratulations to you. You see, when I pick you, you have to allow yourself to be picked. <laughs> congratulations, darling. So that is our winner for our high sense, super crazy giveaway moment. Hello, yes. it's your turn. You take home a high sense microwave. <laughs> Going home with a high sense microwave. Come on. Thank you. Is it too heavy for you? Whoa. Whoa. Thank you. Whoa. So this is all so yours. Heavy. And let, let, let's show them the high sense so they know it's really the an best. original high sense microwave. Wow. And the this best one. Hey. Quick see. action. Yes. So thank you very much. Thank so we can put this one down. Yes. And also from Lester Ghana Limited. You get to take this with Whoa. you. Thank you very much. Coach Conflicts. Wow. <laughs> yes, so you're taking a lot of things. And again, from Lexa Ghana Limited, wow. you take home your Yas product. I know you're going to be in town for a while, so you yes. need the washing. Yes, so you are sorted. I need it, actually. I need it. <laughs> then finally, it's all about celebration. My birthday was two days ago. Well, wow. so, and I think I was the first to wish you on Instagram. Yes! Yes! Oh. I won! Thank you. So I, I was first. I mean, I, I really did it. Yes. So, this God bless you for that. is a belated one from Jace Cakes. So, we can. Oh actually... my God! This is really wow. awesome. Yeah, so this is all yours. A belated birthday going out to you. And thank you Woo! very much for coming. All right. Thank you very much. So, five years ago, she shared a story that got the whole world talking. 
And after those years, God has done something amazing for her. She came stressing about whether she'd be able to go back to the UK to join her husband or not. And today she sits here fulfilled, restored, looking prettier, looking bigger than she was at that time. And it just tells you how amazing God can be when you have the time to wait upon him. So a very big thank you going now to our sponsors, High Sense, Yas Washing Powder and Yas Sanitary Pad, Hooch Corn and Choco Flakes to GTP, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, Jim Ray Estates, Ophelia of ABS Collections. Thank you very much for my outfit to Stacey's Boutique GH, to Afro Chic, thank you very much, to Divine Cassie, GH Beauty Artistry, and of course to Jay's Cakes and Vic D for my braids. So it has been amazing. Always do remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you and keep on being good to one another because we are all gods working this head. See you next week. Welcome to the end of the tunnel. I see a bright light. Shining through And it's just for you